Are we hitting the panic button yet when it comes to the struggles of Adam Wainwright? We talk about it today on Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio, as well as follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. We're also available on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe and comment. That way you can interact with us. Hit the notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Question marks surrounded this Cardinals pitching staff coming into spring training. Lots of questions, and we, we've still got a lot of them to, to answer. Uh, health was a big thing for Jack Flaherty and Steven Matz. Uh, were the dominant glimpses that we saw from Jordan Montgomery last season real, or were they fiction? Can Miles Michaelis? duplicate his all-star campaign and then there's the the future Cardinals Hall of Famer Adam Wainwright coming into his final year in the big big leagues he's set to retire at the end of this season will we get the Adam Wainwright from the first five months of last year who was very very good or was what happened in September a glimpse into something worse something that we should be nervous about because Adam hasn't looked very good so far in spring training he just has it. And it's got a lot of folks wondering if Adam has maybe hit that wall at the end of his career here and is essentially cooked and not any good anymore. I don't want to go that far yet, but you have to be a little bit worried about the trend that's been going on with Adam Wainwright that has continued from last season. Now, for those of you who don't remember, Adam Wainwright was pretty darn good last year. Pretty darn good last year from the beginning of the season until the end of August. Now, in March and April, he goes two and three, but his ERA was at four. Strikeouts per nine at 8.7. Not crazy good numbers by any means, but doable. You, you'll take that out of a 40-year-old, right? Um, he was walking a few more guys than uh, we're, we're used to and uh, walking a few more than you'd like him to. But at the same time, just getting things going in the season. You're not freaking out too much in the first month of the year, right? Inflated numbers a little bit because of the walks that were going on there. May, much better. Goes 3-1, and one, ERA's at 1.69. His walks are down. He looks like the Adam of old that we've always known and loved through his tenure as a St. Louis Cardinal. This included one uh, very standout performance, an outstanding one that he had against the Padres, where he tosses seven innings of shutout ball and he strikes out 10. Got a no decision in that one, by the way. So he didn't get the win, unfortunately, but a very good month. June, he's one and one, but the ERA is at 3.66. And at the end of the month, his ERA sits just over three at 3.07. Three months into the season, ERA just over three for Adam Wainwright. You'll take that. July, his record is one and three, but the ERA is still under four for the month at 3.90. And he had one really bad outing at Cincinnati, which kind of blew things up a bit. And he has struggled at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati his entire career. Historically, has not pitched well there. Can I implore you, Ali Marmol, to not start Adam Wainwright at Great American Ballpark this year? Don't let it happen. No matter how much he begs and kicks and fusses, don't let him do it. It's just not a good idea. Thank you. But in that game when he uh, pitched against Cincinnati on the road, gave up seven runs and five and a third, he was also saddled with a tough loss that month against Philly, where he threw a nine-inning complete game, but he lost that game two to nothing. So at the end of the July, he's seven and eight. He's got an ERA of 3.2 way, which is more than acceptable. 3.2 way, you're going to take that. And the record is whatever. It's the record. I mean, just because our guys don't hit sometimes during his starts doesn't mean uh, he should be punished by looking at a seven and eight record and being disappointed. Now, August, he has an awesome month. He goes two and one. Two and one, but his ERA is at 2.50. And in this month, he had another really ugly outing, which 
It happens to pitchers. It seems to bite Adam a lot more here later in his career where he'll throw four or five games and then one game he just stinks. It just happens to him. But uh, that game was against the Yankees in August where he got ripped for six earned over four innings. But in his other five starts in August, he throws seven shutout innings against the Cubs, goes nine innings against Milwaukee, allowing just one run, but the Cardinals lose that game three to two. Seven more shutout innings against Colorado, two earned runs over six against the Cubs, and then two earned over six and two-thirds against Atlanta. By the end of August, Adam Wainwright's got a 99 record, but his ERA is at 3.09. He's right up there with some of the best in the National League and all of Major League Baseball. But in September, the wheels fall off. He only tosses one game where he gives up less than four runs, and that was a five-inning, one-run effort against Milwaukee for the month. He goes two and three. His ERA for the month, 7.22. Just balloons up. And it's it's ugly, and it's painful to watch because we can't figure out what the heck's going on with Adam Wainwright. All year, he's been pretty good. And then in September, everything comes crashing down around him. And we get those reports that he's dealing with dead arm. Okay. If that's what's going on, he says he can work through it. He's figuring it out. No big deal. Um, Then the season comes to an end, sadly, for the Cardinals very quickly. Adam doesn't pitch in the uh, postseason. And after the season's done, he posts on social media that it wasn't, in fact, dead arm that he was dealing with, but figured out it was some mechanical issues in his delivery, which led to his poor performance. Okay. Overall, a solid year, kind of like Michaelis's, where the record doesn't really reflect how well he actually pitched, but he finished 11 and 12, ERA 3.71. But you don't remember much of the good stuff because that whole last month was so bad. It was so bad. And none of us could figure out what was going on. Adam Wainwright couldn't figure out what was going on. They didn't get it fixed in time, and he didn't get to pitch in the postseason. And you just have that lasting image of, him coming off the field with Pujols and Molina after having another bad outing. And it was sad to see. You were hoping that, you know, they all three could go out in a blaze of glory and have this amazing performance together. You know, Pujols ends his career with a base hit. So does Yadier Molina. But the last thing we saw from Adam Wainwright was a bad outing. And you don't want that. You know, that leaves a bad taste in your mouth. So now we go into spring training this year, and we're hopeful that whatever flaws Wayno was dealing with at the end of last year, they've been ironed out. And he seems like he's ready to rock. He's in great spirits coming into camp. He's excited to pitch for Team USA at the World Baseball Classic. And we think all is right in the world. We expect the same old Wayno when things get going here. But in his first spring outing, he gives up one run on three hits and two winnings against Washington. Meh. First outing, right? No big deal. We'll we'll be fine. Yesterday, Thursday, three runs on five hits in three innings. Uh Uh-oh. Eyebrows raised a tad there. They're also hitting the ball really, really hard off of him. Like, we're talking 104 off the bat. Like, just, just line shots all over the outfield. But again, it's spring training. We're not trying to freak out yet, right? We're still trying to keep... Uh, a level head about these things. But then you see the reports after the game yesterday about his low velocity. And these uh, these stories start to circulate a little bit. It gets people's attention for sure. It got mine. Uh, Derek Gould from stltoday.com reported that Wainwright's average velocity last season was 88.6. Okay, he's not Nolan Ryan. We know that. He never has been. But in his first spring training game, his maximum velocity, not his average, but his maximum velocity was at 85.6. And then on Thursday, the hardest pitch he threw, 86.2. And remember, Adam is also supposed to be ahead of schedule as he prepares to leave for the World Baseball Classic. So you wouldn't think that he's still easing into things. So these numbers are drawing some attention from people. And Wainwright actually spoke to reporters about this after yesterday's outing. And here's what he thinks is going on. He said, quote, I had some back uh, some back spasm stuff going on a couple of weeks ago, and it shut a muscle down that I'm really trying to get to turn back on right now. My left leg and my glute are not firing through. Even when I sprint right now, I'm not really getting that leg up like I want to, and I've got to work through some things. Three starts from now, if I'm still throwing 86, you can talk to me about velocity, but we're making good strides. He did not appear to be upset. <laughs> he seemed to be fine with everything that was going on when he uh, spoke about it. 
to the reporters after the game. He wasn't freaking out. He didn't look frustrated. But on top of the lack of firing in his glutes, <laughs> which is a great term, by the way, fire the glutes. Uh, Wainwright also said that he he burned his index finger on his pitching hand when he grabbed a hot pan of sausage for his son and that that blister that came from the accident, it opened up during Thursday's outing, which will be his last start for the team before he leaves for the World Baseball Classic. So that also led to some issues that he was dealing with in Thursday's outing. And manager Ali Marmel, he didn't seem phased by any of this, just to be clear. He said, it's not an injury deal. It's about him not sinking his body up correctly, and he didn't feel like he was getting the leg drive he typically gets. After doing some strength assessments, it's something he can solve. This is a veteran, and he knows what he needs to do. Wayno's going to do that whether he's here or not, and that's a trust thing that I'm not concerned with. Well, I'm glad they're calm about it. I, for one, am a bit more concerned. Uh, level to 1 to 10, where 10 being the most concerned, I'm at about a 5 right now. Before yesterday's outing, I was probably at like a 3. I wasn't too worried about it. But back-to-back -back starts like this, you don't like to see it. And it's not like all of a sudden he was throwing 4 or 5 miles per hour faster than he was in his first outing. Oh, he's right around the same there as far as maximum velo goes. So, um He's not going to throw for Team USA for at least nine days, so hopefully it'll all get sorted out by them. Uh, outside of Wainwright's drama, there was one other Cardinal who whose play on the field was catching people's attention on Thursday, and it, and it was for good things, though. It wasn't for the bad stuff that's going on with Wainwright, for the good things that this ball player's got going on, and I'm going to tell you all about him next on Locked on Cardinals. Now, the midway point of the NBA season is here. We had the All-Star game. The guys are, are back on the courts and, uh, you know, even got Kevin Durant playing for the Phoenix Suns. And uh, now is the perfect time for you to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, especially if you're a basketball fan, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and three-pointers drain. If you're like me, you like to make the smaller bets and then add them all up and try to make a bigger profit, and that's what FanDuel will let you do. You combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. So far this spring, we've got a nice look at some of the top prospects in the organization. Pitching-wise, we've seen Team Kentz, Gordon Graceffo, and Matthew Libertor throw some, some nice outings, some nice innings so far. Offensively, Jordan Walker has clearly passed the eye test and then some with his performance so far. Uh, Moises Gomez has really looked good at the plate this far uh, so far in spring training as well. But another name that's really been buzzing around camp is uh, the name of shortstop prospect Mason Wynn, who continues to dazzle in different ways each game that he's a part of, and he was doing it again on Thursday. Now, with Tommy Edmond gone to the World Baseball Classic, Paul DeYoung's dealing with that arm fatigue still. The 20-year-old Wynn got the start at shortstop on Thursday. He's actually starting on uh, Friday as well and batting ninth. But on Thursday, he goes one for two on the day, steals his second stolen base of the spring. But as great as that was, most people aren't talking about what he did offensively on Thursday, but what he did defensively and the play that he made in the top of the sixth inning where he goes to his left up the middle, slides into the dirt, right, or right behind the second base bag, grabs the ball, pops up, throws the ball over to first base. And he doesn't just throw it. It is an absolute seed <laughs> over to first base, clocked at 99.9 .9 miles per hour. That's fast. That's a cannon. And so far this spring, not just his arm is show is is doing you know the headlines right now. I mean he's he's doing everything right, guys. Uh, this spring he's hitting five seventy one. He's four for seven. He's got two runs scored. He's got a ribby. He's got two stolen bases, all while playing solid defense at shortstops. Not fumbling. He looks he looks the part. He really does. I mean he's showing off the skill set that has him ranked as the number two prospect in the organization behind Jordan Walker and has him ranked at number 50 overall, according to MLB.com's prospect rankings. Although he's not in the top 10 
out of shortstops, which a little strange, but there's a good crop of shortstops out there right now. Uh, John Denton from MLB.com got a quote from Wen on the throw in this game saying, I tried to get it over there as quick as I could. I wasn't trying to throw it hard or anything. I haven't really gotten to show off my arm strength to these guys yet, so that was cool. So let me get this straight. So not trying to throw it hard. He throws it almost 100 miles per hour. Just a little flick of the wrist. Is that all that was for Mason went over to first base? I mean, my goodness. That is, I mean, God-given talent. What are you going to do, man? 100 miles per hour over to first base, and he wasn't even trying to throw it hard. I wonder what I wonder what he could get. You know how like when you would go to a, a carnival or something and you're like go to the to the where they, they see how hard you can throw. And I know it's kind of tough because you don't get to loosen up yourself out there. And, uh, I wonder what Mason Wynn can throw. Like if he put his whole body into it and just decided to just let it rip, I wonder how high he could get. Because if if hundred is that easy to him, I mean, crazy. Crazy to think about. Uh, some other takeaways from Thursday's loss, Jake Woodford's appearance. He did give up a solo home run, but he also struck out five over three innings, and it was the only hit he gave up. I feel bad for Jake Woodford because it feels like he's earned a spot, but we don't know where to put him. Is he, I guess, long relief? Do you want to, I guess, middle relief? I mean, whose spot is he taking? Like, I, I feel bad for him because all he's done is produce when he when he gets to play. So I, you got to, I mean, talent will... F- they'll find a place to put him. But at the same time, it's almost as if he's earned more than he's going to get because there's just not enough spots. Uh, Jordan Hicks struggles again. One run on three hits and one inning of work. He did strike out two. And uh, I can say this, at least he didn't walk a guy. He he hit a guy, but he didn't walk a guy after handing out three free passes his last outing. But hasn't been a good spring for Jordan Hicks yet either. One and two thirds innings. Three runs, four hits. He's walked three, hit a guy, has struck out two. His ERA is at 16.20. So still a lot of work to be done there before opening day. Uh, JoJo Romero got in yesterday. No runs, one hit, walked two, struck out two in one inning of work as he tries to uh, be one of those left-handers out of the bullpen this year for Ali. Uh, Wilking Rodriguez, the uh, Rule 5 guy that people have been talking about. He gave up a solo blast in his lone inning of work. He did strike out a guy. Offensively, there wasn't much to to write home about. They got shut down. Only three hits on the day. Goldie Arenado and Mason Wynn uh, were the only guys who got singles after hammering the ball the last couple of days. Uh, The guys are back at it today against the Marlins, who are starting Johnny Cueto again. Uh, Jordan Walker leading off today. You got to remember he homered off of uh, Cueto in their first meeting, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, Tyler O'Neill DHing. Goldschmidt was set to play first base and bat third, but he got scratched, so Juan Yepes will be at first base instead. No reason was given. Uh, For the Goldie scratch, but uh, according to tweets that I saw online, it doesn't appear to be anything injury-related. Nolan Arenado's at third, Burleson in right field, moderate second base, Andrew Kisner is catching uh, Mercado in center field, Mason Wynn gets the start again at shortstop, and Miles Michaelis is on the bump today. Uh, We did get some not-so-great news on Jack Flaherty. I know, we're going to tell you about it next here on Locked on Cardinals. Now, don't start freaking out yet. Please don't. But Jack Flaherty's 2023 Grapefruit League debut for the Cardinals got pushed back again when the right-handed pitcher experienced a little discomfort in his lower half on Thursday. That according to manager Ali Marmel. Uh, Flaherty was originally scheduled to throw a bullpen session on Thursday, but that's now been scheduled for Friday, which is today. That uh, caused his start to get moved back a day. Flaherty's first spring outing is now slated for Sunday when the Cardinals host the Mets. Connor Thomas, the Arizona Fall League Pitcher of the Year, will get his second start for the Cardinals on Saturday in West Palm Beach against the Washington Nationals again. uh, Rather than start the Cardinals' February 27th spring training game against the Mets, Flaherty instead threw two innings at approximately 40 pitches in a simulated game on a backfield at Roger Dean Stadium. Uh, Marmol said on Thursday that Flaherty's discomfort was mild and that the pitcher would have worked through it had the squad been in the regular season. All I can say is strap in, boys and girls. The Flaherty 2023 roller coaster has begun, and just like the Screaming Eagle at Six Flags, it's sure to make you feel some discomfort in your lower areas (laughs) throughout the year. Oh, man, Jack Flaherty already dealing with some discomfort. Gosh, 
They need them. They need them. Stay healthy, Jack. Stay healthy. Uh, thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen. Now for your second listen, check out Locked on Fantasy Baseball. You can win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. Find Locked on Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Once again, please give us a follow on Twitter at JD Sports Radio and at LO underscore Cardinals. Like and subscribe on YouTube. We're trying to reach that 5,000 subscriber goal by opening day. Uh, we continue to rise, but if you haven't subscribed yet, we'd appreciate if you hit that little button down there on the bottom there on the YouTube page. You're the best fans in baseball for a reason, and I'll see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.